Hey guys, how's it going? In my last video, I showed a couple of hauls of uh, CDs from my local 2nd and Charles store here in town. And I uh, mentioned that I had a large haul of CDs sort of in between those, a uh, big haul of jazz CDs, and wanted to make a separate video. So um, I try to make this video quick. Uh, it's a lot of CDs, about 80 CDs that I picked up over the course of uh, the last probably month, month and a half maybe. And uh, yeah, so what happened is I went in the store one day and went through all the vinyl and pulled out a couple of records I was planning on buying and then went through the CDs. And when I finished going through the CDs, I looked through a cart that was by the uh, the CD racks. It's one of these rolling carts where they put books and CDs and stuff that they're bringing out to stock on the shelves. And I noticed on this cart um, in the CDs there were a lot of uh, jazz CDs I hadn't seen before, obviously a new arrival. I kept pulling them off one after another, and they were all in just beautiful shape. Some had taken really nice care of them, and they're really interesting because uh, a lot of stuff looks like someone had been collecting since the, probably about 86 or so. So a lot of early uh, CD versions, uh, reissues of jazz albums, and uh, the store had priced them all uh, really reasonably. Uh, excuse me, anything from about $2.25 uh, up to... Five, six bucks on average. Uh, there are a few more that were maybe in the $10 range or even 12 bucks. But for the most part, probably averaging about $4 a piece. And then, uh, you know, picking them up over the course of a few weeks. Uh, my first purchase, I bought a whole bunch. And then uh, came back again and again and used uh, some of the coupons. If you buy $25 of this stuff, you get five bucks off. So probably bought the average price down to about $3.75. So a really reasonable price on these. And like I said, they're all, someone took really nice care of them. The CDs have no like fingerprints on them or anything. The cases aren't scratched up or broken or anything for the most part. There's maybe a, a crack here and there, probably from being handled in the store or just transported. Um, but a lot of really fundamental uh, jazz uh, CDs from my collection. A lot of Miles Davis, John Coltrane, uh, Charles Mingus, things like that. So, uh... Anyway, I'm going to try to go through them pretty quick because there's a lot. I think it's 81 CDs total. Um, there's a few that aren't jazz. There's some uh, some uh, Funkadelic CDs at the end I'll show. And I uh, picked up a few by uh, DJ Spooky, um, sort of hip-hop electronic artist. And it's kind of interesting because I could tell these were all from the same collection for a few different reasons. And uh, it was weird because I'm trying to picture who this person is. Obviously a big jazz fan who's been collecting since CDs since the, you know, sort of mid-late 80s, so, yeah, a lot of CDs back then, so they had some money, so they're probably, you know, not your typical teenager buying CDs back then, probably someone already in their mid to late 20s, uh, but there were a lot of cool stuff like uh, Funkadelic and, uh, you know, newer things like DJ Spooky, there were some hip-hop CDs, um, some world music CDs as well. So I'm not quite sure, maybe a music professor or something like that, but someone a very hip, uh, hip, uh, hip taste in music, I think. Um, so anyway, uh, there were three reasons really I could tell they were all from the same collection. I mean, it's pretty obvious because there were just so many in at once, but um, I'll show the first, uh, I'll go through these jazz ones alphabetically. The very first CD is Albert Eiler. Uh, in Greenwich Village on Impulse, and uh, right away the uh, the artwork, the booklet, the orientation is this way. So the guy took the booklet out. I'm assuming it's a guy, maybe it's a woman. Took the booklet out, and when they put it back in, they put it in uh, instead of the normal way we're used to. Put it in this way. So maybe uh, this person had them on maybe like a, a drawer of some sort, or kept them in the box where they. They look from the top at the spines, and as they flip through them, they'd see the album art, and it's in the, this orientation instead of storing them this way. And then the, the second reason I knew they were all from the same collection is everything was just in immaculate condition. I mean, the jewel cases weren't scuffed up, scratched up, broken, weren't dirty from smoke or fingerprints or anything like that, and the CDs were all just, you know... And, Beautiful shape, not scratched up, scuffed up, no fingerprints, nothing like that. 
Yeah, and like I said, they were all um, mostly jazz CDs. It looks like they're early reissues on CD from like the mid to late 80s. Um, yeah, so really cool. So I'm going to go through these pretty quick. I don't want to make this a huge long video. Uh, so Albert Eiler and Grant's Village on Impulse. Uh, next up, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, Indestructible on Blue Note. Uh, Ron Carter, Blues Farm on CTI. And some of these I've taken the booklets out and put them back in the uh, traditional way. So that's why they look like that. Um, just an example, $3.25. And this CD, a few of these uh, early CTI reissues, I noticed the disc will actually say... I don't know if it'll come through on camera, but the discs were made in Japan. It says right down at the bottom. Kind of interesting. In the early days, a lot of CDs were manufactured, I guess, either in Japan or West Germany. Ornette Coleman, Double Quartet, Free Jazz, a collective improvisation. Ornette Coleman, Ornette on tenor. On tenor sorry. Um... All right, this one I already had on like sort of a digipack reissue from about 10 years ago or so, uh, but that was cool to have the original, one of the original CD issues of it. Alice Coltrane, Journey in Sacha Dananda. And this one was $3.50, so not a huge, huge investment, something I already owned. Um, Soul Train, John Coltrane, Soul Train. And these are interesting. These are uh, original Jazz Classics reissues. But typically with the original Jazz Classics um, CDs, when you see them, they have this kind of white and black distinctive spine. But these early original Jazz Classics just had a, a plain black spine. And on the back it says uh, Digital Remaster. Um, which they dropped pretty soon thereafter, I think. So, John Coltrane, Black Pearls, another original Jazz Classics reissue, uh, $3. Um, John Coltrane, Blue Train, uh, Rudy Van Gelder edition. This one may not have been from the same collection. Um, it may have just been, it happened to be there in the store at the same time, because this is what you typically find for a used CD uh, you can see that the paper inserts kind of warped, um, the covers scuffed up. Yeah, and this is a later reissue, Rudy Van Gelder edition from the probably late 90s, early 2000s. Um, Africa Brass, the John Coltrane, Coltrane Quartet on Impulse. Uh, Coltrane at the Village Vanguard on Impulse. Uh, Meditations, another John Coltrane, four dollars and seventy cents. I'll just show some of these prices periodically here. Uh, John Coltrane and uh, John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman, the vocalist Johnny Hartman on Impulse. Uh, John Coltrane, Ohm, another one on, Imp on Impulse. Sorry about my voice, I've got a bit of a cold and having a little trouble breathing here. Um, John Coltrane Quartet Crescent. And these are all the early uh, MCA Impulse Free issues. Uh, later, I think it was GRP. And now I think uh, Universal Music does most of the Impulse Free issues. There's some kind of weird little logo. I can't really make it out without my glasses, but. Some kind of little D, D something, maybe digital, digital remaster. Um, okay, getting out of John Coltrane into uh, Chick Corea. Chick Corea and Gary Burton. Lyric Suite for Sextet on ECM. And this is a West German uh, CD here from ECM. $3.75. Uh, Chick Corea, Return to Forever on ECM. And again, this is a uh, West German CD. Made in West Germany. Uh, Chick Corea, Dave Holland, and Barry Altschul, ARC. 
and uh, this has um, meaning for Scientologist uh, I can't remember it's the affinity something reaction complex or something so it's kind of creepy in a way but uh, good music <laughs> another one made in West Germany this was uh, one of the more expensive ones seven dollars and twenty five cents Chick Korea was a Scientologist still is um, yeah, I'm not going to say anything more about that. Uh, Miles Davis, getting into Miles Davis here. Uh, Debut Records presents Miles Davis Blue Moods, a uh, original jazz classics reissue for $1.95. So, just kind of ridiculous price on that one. Uh, working with the Miles Davis Quintet, another OJC reissue. Um, Miles Davis and Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers Nouvelle Vogue on CD Films Soundtracks. So I think this is a French, or I think it's made in West Germany. But soundtracks, I believe, for French films here. From Miles Davis and from Art Blakey. Kind of an interesting CD, never seen that before. Uh, Miles Davis, Cooking at the Plug Nickel. Uh, this is one of the Columbia Jazz Masterpieces reissues. I never quite liked the, the layout on these with their this funky logo and the purple thing around the edge, but it is what it is. And there's another one here. Uh, Miles Davis in person, Friday night at the Black Hawk, San Francisco, Volume 1. Miles Davis Milestones. Miles Davis, Porgy and Bess. So a whole bunch of these uh, Columbia Jazz Masters reissues. Um, jazz Masterpieces reissues. Miles Davis um, with Gil Evans, Miles Davis plus 19, Miles Ahead. Going in a whole bunch of gaps in my uh, Miles Davis collection here. Miles Davis in person, Saturday night at the Black Hawk, San Francisco, Volume 2. So I just showed Volume 1, here's Volume 2, $2.75. Uh, this one's kind of interesting, this is a recent uh, release here, I think. Miles Davis Septet, live in Vienna, 1975. And this is on one of these European labels called Gambit Records. Kind of reissued some of the uh, sort of a gray market thing, I think. Um, sort of a bootleg, but pretty sophisticated looking. Very nice. Uh, this one, um, more of a recent uh, CD from I think the mid 90s. This is uh, Miles Davis Panthalassa, the music of Miles Davis, 1969 to 1974. This are uh, these are mixed translations from uh, producer Bill Laswell for Miles's early electric period stuff um, in a silent way on the corner, things like that. Some critics uh, really liked it, some kind of panned it. Uh, I love it. Absolutely love this CD. I've already got a copy, but this one uh, is obviously going to be in better shape than the one I've got. I played mine a lot. All right, so uh, oh, still got more miles to go. Uh, here's three that are uh, Japanese CDs, actually. First up, uh, Jack Johnson, original soundtrack recording, Jack to the film Jack Johnson, I, I believe, from Miles Davis. Uh, Four dollars and ninety-five cents. You can see the Japanese uh, title on one side. And English on the other. Uh, Miles in the Sky. Another Japanese one. Um, Japanese Japanese script. Uh, this one was four dollars and ninety-five cents. Bags Groove. Uh, this is uh, not really an OJC remaster. This is a Japanese one. And this was two dollars and twenty-five cents. Uh, just I don't I don't know where the how they price these things. It's just ridiculous. 
Uh, more miles still, plenty of miles here. Um, Miles Davis decoy. So getting into, I think, the late 70s, early 80s on this one. Oops. Uh, Miles Davis, the Doobop song. This is a, a CD single here. Uh, this one is basically free. I just uh, was trying to get over the $25 mark so I could use my coupon. If you buy over 25 bucks, you get five off. This was a dollar fifty. Kind of hip hop mixed with jazz there from the 80s. Uh, we want Miles. Uh, live, live stuff from I think the early 80s here. And this is, I think, a French pressing, French CD, two dollars and twenty-five cents. All right, so getting out of miles into Bill Evans, uh, Bill Evans Montro Two, another one of these uh, CTI Creed Taylor Incorporated uh, CD reissues. Uh, Everybody digs Bill Evans. This is one of those uh, early original jazz classics reissues here. Got the pure black spine. Um, Portrait and Jazz, Bill Evans Trio. Again, it's another one of those early original jazz classics ones. It says digital remaster on the back. Uh, $3.50. Bill Evans uh, New Jazz Conceptions. That's your typical original jazz classics version there. Um, more CTI Joe Farrell Quartet. And this was $2.75. Um, an early uh, Blue Note reissue on CD. Herbie Hancock, Speak Like a Child. And these were done by uh, Ron McMaster. Digital transfer by Ron McMaster, excellent uh, transfer engineer, remaster engineer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, another one, early Blue Note jazz CD here. Herbie Hancock, Maiden Voyage. I've got the uh, Rudy Van Gelder remaster version of this from the 90s. If I wanted to get one of the original uh, early CD versions of this and compare. It was only three dollars and sixty-five cents. Uh, stick up, Bobby Hutcherson, connoisseur edition here for two dollars and ninety-five cents. I absolutely love Bobby Hutcherson. Great vibes player, vibraphone, components by Bobby Hutcherson, two dollars and ninety-five cents. Uh, Bobby Hutcherson featuring Harold Land, San Francisco. This one actually they had no price on, so I brought it to the counter and asked if they wouldn't mind pricing it for me. And they said um, they took it over to the pricing area, came back, and I guess they just didn't feel like looking it up or anything. I said, how about a dollar? And I said, okay, that works for me. <laughs> I was expecting them to come back with like five bucks or something. Uh, Bobby Hutcherson, Natural Illusions. This one, I guess, came out on Liberty, Liberty Jazz. Uh, I think this was later reissued by Blue Note, but this is a weird, weird kind of a reissue here. Not sure who's behind this one. Uh, Bobby Hutcherson, George Cable's Herbie Lewis and Philly Joe Jones, Four Seasons on the Timeless label. This is a German German CD here, manufactured in Germany. Three dollars and seventy-five cents. I'll show the, uh, the CD is kind of cool. I don't see uh, stuff on the Timeless label too often. I'm um, getting near the end here. Uh, Keith Jarrett, Expectations. Two dollars and seventy-five cents. Uh, Hubert Law's Afro Classic. This one just popped up recently in the store, so I bought it up. Hubert Law's The Rite of Spring. Another CTI release. Les McCann Layers. Uh, this one kind of 
funky experimental, trying to be kind of fusion like Miles Davis's early electric stuff, I guess. And it's on the uh, collectibles, collectibles label. Um, not too crazy about these reissues on this collectibles label. I guess that's a collectibles jazz classics. But it was two dollars and seventy-five cents, so give it a shot. Um, Charles Mingus, the jazz experiments of Charlie Mingus from uh, Bethlehem Records. A nice reproduction of the original Bethlehem uh, LP backside there for three dollars and seventy-five cents. Uh, Mingus Aum, uh, classic Charles Mingus record here. Thelonious Monk, just called uh, Monk, I believe. Thelonious Monk, Monk's music. Another one of those early uh, original jazz classics versions here with the black spine. For four dollars and ninety-five cents, so on the higher end for these CDs. Uh, Monk's Dream, the Thelonious Monk Quartet. Ayerto or Erto Mariera Free, another CTI record here, two dollars and seventy-five cents. Going up on the end of the jazz, a couple more, or a few more. John Patton, keyboardist John Patton, understanding John Patton from the Blue Note Connoisseur series. I'm sorry, the Blue Note Rare Groove series. And this was uh, two dollars and seventy-five cents. Uh, Max Roach, Maboom, great drummer, two dollars and seventy-five cents. Uh, okay, a few more. Uh, Pharaoh Sanders. Here's another one like the Alice Coltrane I already had on the Digipack uh, version, but uh, it's cheap enough. Three dollars and ninety-five cents. Karma from Pharaoh Sanders. Early uh, MCA Impulse reissue. Pharaoh Sanders Themby. I'm not sure if I have this one CD or not, but uh, it definitely has a different look to it. These early MCA reissues and this one is two dollars and two dollars and seventy five cents Pharaoh Sanders Moonchild another one from the uh, Timeless label made in Germany this one is from the 80s I believe four dollars and fifty cents Wayne Shorter Speak No Evil another one of the early Blue Note on CD uh, reissues here by Ron McMaster. Jimmy Smith, Any Number Can Win. Nice little digipack version here, uh, Verve by Request series, $3.25. Did a nice job with these. Um, another one, Jimmy Smith Live, Root Down. Another one on the Verve by Request, this one $4.35. So the price is all relatively low, but just kind of all over the map. And uh, Blue Note, Jimmy Smith, Crazy Baby. Just found this one on vinyl recently. For four bucks. And let's see, what else? Uh, here's another stack. Red Hot on Impulse. Um, kind of a collection, a uh, compilation of recordings from the Impulse label. Um, to fight, uh, this is... Can't remember the name of the organization. Red Hot, maybe that's what it's called. Just Red Hot. Uh, but it's an organization that uh, they released music to raise money to, uh, I guess, raise awareness about AIDS or help fight AIDS, something like that. Good cause. This is three dollars and twenty-five cents. Some cool tracks on here. Uh, you got Alice Coltrane, Pharaoh Sanders, John Coltrane, uh, Max Roach, Charles Mingus, Archie Shep. Great stuff. Uh, Ginger Baker, drummer from Queen, or not Queen, Cream, Cream, not Queen, Cream. Uh, this uh, Bill Laswell kind of brought him out of retirement. He was in the, the hills of Italy raising cattle or something. I don't know. But uh, 
or horses, I think. Yeah, like a horse, a horse farm or something in Italy. And uh, Johnny Rotten, John Lydon, was making an album, a Public Image Limited album with uh, Bill Aswell and joked he wanted to get Ginger Baker on drums. And Bill Aswell managed to track him down and bring him to the U.S. And they recorded uh, two sort of solo albums for Ginger Baker. This was the second one called uh, Middle Passage on uh, Laswell's Axiom label, sub-label of Island Records. I've already got a copy on CD, I've got on vinyl, but it was uh, $2.75. Figured I'd pick up a nice clean copy. Uh, another one with Laswell involvement, uh, Jimi Hendrix and Lightning Rod. Kind of an early uh, spoken word, uh, pre-rap spoken word artist. Also went by uh, Jalal or uh, Jalaluddin Naridin, part of the Last Poets. This is a CD single for Doriella Dufontaine. And this was uh, kind of Jimi Hendrix and uh, Buddy Miles jamming along and a lightning rod doing one of the spoken word things, a uh, story of a uh, kind of a hooker pulling a scam on some chump, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, originally produced by Alan Douglas. And then getting into uh, the hip hop type stuff, uh, DJ Spooky uh, was sort of a not a DJ like in the turntablist sense, doing turntable tricks so much, but more of like an actual disc jockey where he'd mix different songs and uh, reinterpret them electronically, whatnot. So these are mostly like mixed CDs. Uh, the first one, Under the Influence, on the Six Degrees label. Really cool. A lot of uh, sort of drum and bass and hip hop stuff on here. This one's probably my favorite of his, the bunch I bought. Uh, DJ Spooky Rhythm Science, um, Sub Rosa Revisited, he took uh, tracks from the Sub Rosa, it's a Belgian label that releases sort of experimental avant-garde music, electronic, uh, sort of archived early uh, classical electronic type works. Sound Unbound, uh, another one excerpts and allegories from the Sub Rosa archives. And uh, here's one, DJ Spooky and Dave Lombardo present Drums of Death. Um, Dave Lombardo, the drummer from Slayer, um, also played in the band with uh, Mike Patton of Faith No More, Fantomas, and uh, some projects with uh, John Zorn. This one on the Thirsty Ear label. And another one, uh, final one from DJ Spooky, Creation Rebel. So this is DJ Spooky taking the recordings from uh, Trojan Records, classic uh, reggae label. Making kind of a mixed CD out of those. And then finally, uh, a little stack of uh, Funkadelic here. So this person was not only into jazz and kind of hip-hop, but some, uh, some cool funk. Uh, Funkadelic, let's take it to the stage. Um, some of these are, uh, this is a German, German CD. I don't think these are all available in the U.S. early on. The Electric Spanking of War Babies. This one on Priority Records. I think Ice Cube is on Priority. Sort of a hip-hop label. Funkadelic Cosmic Slop. This one, uh, it's got the sticker on the back. Made in the United Kingdom. Funkadelic, uh, standing on the verge of getting it on. Another German CD, $4.95. Funkadelic, free your mind and your ass will follow. And finally, America Eats Its Young. Very happy to be adding these to the collection. Hadn't, never really find much Funkadelic on record. If I do, it's just beat to, beat to hell. Um, and when I have seen it on CD, it's been, uh, it was years ago, and it was like 20 bucks for a new CD, so... Very happy to pick these up for about four to five dollars a piece. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, I may have left one or two out that I've been listening to and got misplaced, but quite a big uh, CD haul. Uh, spent quite a bit of money. Um, luckily, there was a period uh, a couple months ago where I got a lot of overtime. Made about an extra 150 bucks in overtime or 200 bucks, and uh, 
sort of offset the cost of a lot of these, but a lot of these have kind of dipped into my uh, my Christmas spending budget. So some of these are kind of early Christmas presents to myself. Um, been cutting back on buying vinyl uh, since I bought all these CDs, and it's gonna take me a long time to uh, work my way through and listen to all these. So. Just uh, wanted to get this out of the way, kind of show it uh, as much as anything to document for my own memory before I mix these in, merge them with my uh, my uh, existing CD collection and kind of forget where they came from and uh, probably peel all the price stickers off these. That's kind of tacky. Um, but yeah, just uh, kind of cool. Uh, more than doubled my jazz CD collection um, in a very short span of time. Um, and I mentioned uh, the last time I bought some CDs, I said, you know, the cashier, I said, you, know, you can tell they're all from the same collection because they, whoever owned them put all the booklets in this way. And they said, oh, yeah, the, we've been buying a lot of CDs from this guy. Um, and so I'm kind of hoping that they've got some more coming through the pipeline. Going to keep an eye out for them. But uh, I try to get away from CDs for a while. I uh, hope I haven't bored you guys with so much uh, CD stuff. Going to try to get back into vinyl uh so some 78 RPM records I've picked up recently, some old uh, shellacs. Um, yeah, just may talk about some issues, uh, different things I've been thinking about. But anyway, uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this, especially if you're into jazz. And I'll see you all next time.